I call David Clendon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it is a real pleasure to rise to speak to this third reading of the, uh, of the Waitangi National Trust Board Amendment Bill. It does seem this bill has been the one that's almost got into the House for this final reading a number of times, so it's good that we see it off before the end of the year and are able to implement the, uh, the provisions within it. So this is um, it's a straightforward bill, it's a refreshingly simple bill, but it's also profoundly important in that it does deal with the governance of what I would argue is undoubtedly the, the single most important heritage site in our country, and for that reason it is significant. Waitangi is an important historic site. I think it's also important for our future that as and when we conduct a constitutional discussion, a dialogue in the country as to our future constitutional arrangements, I think it's most important we return to Waitangi and actually stand on that land and have that conversation as well as having it in other parts of the country because it has long been a significant site for gathering, for dialogue, for decision making, even prior to 1840 of course, and I think we should continue to honour that tradition in that place. So I confess when we first cited this bill, I think from memory about a year or so ago, a little over a year perhaps, um, I was inclined to some suspicion because it appeared to be that the government was actually handing back a level of authority, or relinquishing a level of control over the trust. And I'm all, I tend to suspicion when I see governments appearing to do that. But I must acknowledge um, our Peter Paraoni, our matua, who given his unique perspective on the board, was able to reassure me that um, it did seem benevolent and actually we were looking for better outcomes. And that we, for that reason, of course, we are very happy to um, continue to support the bill. So as, as others have mentioned, I think one of the most important provisions of the legislation is to um, allow for proper representation of those four chiefly families who formerly have been represented by just the one um, representative. And I acknowledge, I'm quite sure that those, that, that Mr. Paraoni and others who have gone before him did a sterling job in representing, but there really there is no substitute for having those descendants of Honehiki, of Kawati, of Tamati Wakanini, of Pomari properly represented by descendants of those individuals. They are, of course, uh, fruitful families. There's no shortage of contenders, I think, to represent and represent well um, the, the, those, uh, those rangatira. And it's, I think it's a very good provision that will um, see richness and depth come to that board in a way that perhaps hasn't been possible previously. And in that note, I'd just like to acknowledge what we heard just earlier about our colleague, Mr. Henare. I think it's um, entirely fitting that he should step into that role that was so... Um, honourably kept by his late father, and I'm sure he'll do the role of great justice in his time as well. So that's very good news, and I look forward to the official um, uh, announcement of that. <coughs> so it's equally fair to say that I think the Crown representation on the Trust is now more evenly balanced, that there will be MPs representing both the government and the opposition on the trust as of right, as well as the Prime Minister and um, the relevant ministers in a sort of an ex officio way. I think that's, that does better reflect the status of uh, the body as a representative body to have that, um, that input and that, those perspectives represented there. So I'll just say in passing, I think um, as New Zealanders, I think a lot of us wear our heritage quite lightly that perhaps we take for granted these sites like Waitangi and don't really understand or think enough about their significance to the role they played in making the country that we do are fortunate enough to live in today. Waitangi itself, of course, um, the, but for the Bledisloe gift, could have been lost to the country. It could have been privatised, it could have been put to some other use. It was effectively rescued and at least maintained in public ownership for in perpetuity by that gift, and we think we should acknowledge that. I think equally other sites, Te Waimate, um, which was an important signing, Mangungu, which was of course on February the 12th, 1840, the site of the single largest signing of Te Triti. And yet only in recent years has there been more than a very humble celebration. It is only now starting to get some recognition, as are many of the other historic sites around the country. And I think it's important that we do continue to recognise the importance of our history, the heritage sites. I was at, um, at Waitangi on the 28th of October, 
in the Whare Runanga, um, listening to a very interesting, very engaging lecture from Manuka Henare about the events of October 28, 1835. And again, that's a such an important part of our history. Arguably, October 28th is New Zealand's Independence Day because the Declaration did not declare independence of Māori. That was a given. It declared the independence of New Zealand as a nation state and was recognised as such in Britain and in the powers of Europe. And I think we, we tend to, um, to gloss over that reality, that it was the beginning of the nation state that we now have. And of course, Waitangi, the treaty, was the, the next significant step in that process to full independence. So I think it's important that we continue to, um, to attend to what happens at Waitangi. I do visit there fairly regularly. It's great to see the museum advancing a pace, and we look forward with real pleasure and expectation to its opening. And I do echo the comments made as well, that it will be great when we have an adequate facility there to store the, the original document. It's appropriate for the now that it be stored here in Wellington in, such, in conditions that will protect it, but it's equally um, compelling that it should be at that site where it was signed back in the day, and we do look forward to that occurring. And I think it's not the cost, it's a real investment in our past and in our future to return the document home. So, so with those few words, I will be pleased to, um, as I say, to confirm the, the green support for this bill, look forward to its passing, and we wish well the members, the new membership of the board as it reforms in the new year. Kia ora.